The, the first two poems I'm going to read are from my chapbook, unless you're willing to evaporate, and I do have copies for sale tonight. Um, I consider these two companion poems, so um, I'll just begin. The music played on while they talked. We've just met. We've always known each other. He laughs at calluses on my fingertips. I confess I once wrote songs. The waitress brings another round of drinks. The music stops and years play on, like music talking under the silence of guitar strings in a crowded bar. We share bodies. We have no bodies to share. He imagines calluses cannot feel my fretboard spine, the background melody he plays while we talk. I didn't steal his calluses. My fingers blister on unplayed strings. We are not talking. The music plays on. We love, but not each other. Only yes, each other, but not love. The music blisters. Guitar strings become drinks in a crowded bar. We never leave. The Art of Romance Through Analog Electronics. He knows the way I dance when I'm tired. When guitar signal widens and reverb curls against exposed conduits. My hand grips his hand, swaying with my hip. He cannot feel my fretboard spine. I want him to be afraid of me. Afraid of being pulled into a new kind of black hole that holds us on the cusp of distortion. A black hole with worn out frets, grooves for his fingers, warm strings. A black hole that emits sound like sleepless nights ignore physics. A black hole that blinks three o'clock, never 301. The music plays on. When I am tired, I want his hand to be space station signal wave receiver. I want him to catch graceful failure, my black hole hip sway transmission. So that's it for my chapbook, but I'm going to continue. Thank you. I'm going to continue with the music, the music theme on this next one. And the Leonard in this one is, of course, Leonard Cohen. An uncertain prayer for a complicated deity. Leonard, I have lost my longing. I pull records from the shelf, sink into ritual, slide vinyl from its sleeve, let fingertips graze only its edges, set the platter spinning, lower needle reverently into the groove. The turntable is an altar with generous deities. Who prays to whom in musical communion? Offering of rhythm guitar, offering of synth, offering of drum solo defining my spine. I receive side A's grace and side B's blessing. A shiver of vocals collides with lyrics traced from elbow to wrist. Imperfect singers ring holy harmonies. The psalm of beats that sway my hips and dip my knees. Would I ask you to kneel with me? I know, Leonard, you died years ago. The prayers of your ghost create stranger mythologies. I fear that age aside, if we'd met at club's closing on a tipsy night, I might have asked you whether my affection for problematic men is a penchant, a predilection, or a proclivity. And you and your explanation might have winked and warned me of the dangers of flirting with old gods. I fear I would have kissed you. <clears throat> And then I fear I would have kissed you again. Um, so a little acknowledgement for this one. We're leaving music now and going into my nature, uh, nature poems. Uh, the inspiration from this one came from a spelling list that my son's teacher gave him last year. Um, so with gratitude to Jordan, this is purposeful. My soul is small and crawls a lot like a bug who doesn't know its smallness.
but knows in its antenna that the difference between green grass and thatch is decomposed sweetness. It scurries over sun-hot concrete to construct the meaning of a dead leaf, erratic pilgrim to shrines of invisibility. Sometimes it shimmers with memories of pushing the sun over the horizons. Sometimes it scuttles against twigs and stones too impassable to comprehend. It knows how to pray with its legs folded against its thorax, how to sim sing hymns of decay chant the sacrament of metamorphosis, intone songs of reciprocity. It absorbs damp earth holiness, gobbling minutiae that never reveals its purpose until it is clamped within the beak of something large and winged, somewhere between being nourished and nourishing. And, um, I always think of Neil Gaiman when I read my poems because I heard him, he came, was an EPL speaker a little while ago, and he, he talked about the diversity in his books, and he would say, you know, somebody would say, oh, you like Sandman? Well, Coraline's nothing like that. So this is nothing like what I just read. <laughs> um, it's called Impossibilities. If you plant a garden on a floodplain, you can't ask the river to wait until after harvest. If you open an umbrella, you can't beg the barometer to control the density of clouds. If you shout ludicrous confessions, you can't unvibrate vocal folds into a whisper. If you clip flowers from a bleeding heart, you can't line your tongue with insincerity. If you offer a garden, you can't curl up in a blizzard and become a snowbank. If you collect sparrow feathers from a cat's mouth, the carcass has already been swallowed. If you're trying not to fall in love, it's already too late. How many ways will you make me tell you I would not change a thing? And I'm gonna end with two frog poems. Um, I have actually, I'm working on a chat book that is all frog poems. Can enchantment end without a kiss? I've been a frog too long. I leap when I want to stay at the pond's edge and hope this person is a princess. In her silence, I recall fragments of frog lore. Transformation lives within the obicularis oris, a kissing muscle. Absent from my anatomy, some reflex of affection I haven't inspired. I fear my skin is too thirsty. I don't have digits that can trace her jaws and guide her mouth. For minutes of stillness, she watches me, drops nothing I can barter for attention. With amphibian timidity, I crawl onto her hand. My skin absorbs water from her held breath. This is how I make her smile. I hurl my absurd body against her lips, ricochet into the water, and wait. And my last one is called Instructions for Aspiring Amphibians. <coughs> Remember, your lungs are not the only way to access oxygen. Don't long for land before you lose your gills. Take joy in the sticky agility of your tongue. Eat old skins to nourish new selves. Move between worlds often. Make a game of it get muddy. Thank you.